Are you thinking about buying your first rental property? Despite what the media is telling you these days about the housing market crashing, there might be opportunities where you can get your foot in the door with your first rental property. In this video, I'm gonna be covering one of the strategies that has taken over social media over the last several years to help people become first time investors and actually something that I've done in the past with a couple of my buddies. So make sure you stay to the very end of the video so you understand the strategy so maybe you can get your foot in the door and becoming an investor yourself. If this is the first time that we've met, my name is Sean Uihara. I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot, helping you finance your homes all across the country. Whether you're a first time home buyer, buying a vacation home, or looking to build your real estate portfolio. You can check the description below for links to more information on how to get your mortgage right. And if you ever need a second opinion, whether you're looking for a pre-approval or a refinance, you can always send me an email for a free, no obligation, total cost analysis to make sure that you are doing the right thing with your home loan. Now, investing has become more and more popular these days, especially with podcasts and websites like Bigger Pockets and all these other real estate gurus that are out there online. Now, one of the things that they always seem to talk about is house hacking. Now, what is house hacking? House hacking is essentially you're living in one of the rooms, whether you're buying a single family home or you're buying a multi-unit property and you're renting out the other rooms or units that you own. That's an easy way for you to build up passive income and to offset the entire mortgage payment. I've heard many people recently start talking about renting out rooms to roommates. Now, when I think back on my first home, that's exactly what I did. I had a couple of my best friends where we all lived together here in Vegas. I decided to buy a property. They simply moved in with me and we all split the cost as if we were just renting another home, except I was now the landlord. So that's a really cool way where you can be a first time home buyer. And let's just say you've got the best credit or maybe you've been the most responsible friend out of your entire group where you're taking the leap and you're ready to buy a house. You can simply purchase that home as a primary residence and rent out the other rooms to your roommates. You could even have your siblings live with you and help offset the cost to the mortgage. I've had a number of clients over the years implement this strategy to where they've been able to either pay their home off really fast or they've then saved up that extra cash to then buy other investment properties. So it's just a really cool way for you to find the hack in order to become an investor. Now, why is it a hack you might ask? Well, typically when you're buying an investment property, you're wanting to put down at least 25 to 30% down. So if you are truly gonna be living in the home, and maybe again, your buddies or your girlfriends, maybe they're just gonna follow you and live with you. That's an easy way for you to get your foot in the door when it comes to owning a property. Now, I was looking at a home online here in Las Vegas, just to give you an idea of what the payment would look like. So I found a town home. It was a three bedroom, three bath town home, and the sales price was only $243,000, which to me is an amazing price, especially with how high values have been going here in Vegas over the last several years. Now, let's just say you were looking at an FHA loan. FHA is only three and a half percent down. Remember, FHA requires you to live in the home. So you can't do this and rent the whole property out. You still have to move into the home and call this your primary residence. So if we're gonna take three and a half percent of 243,000, our down payment, is going to be $8,505. And for most of you that are renting these days, when you add up what your first month, your last month, your security deposit is gonna be for a rental, I'm sure you're coming really close to this $8,000 number. So imagine if you could then purchase your own home, become your own landlord, and start building wealth. This is how it's done, it's that easy once you understand how to crunch the numbers. Now, again, this is a three bedroom home and we're gonna be looking at FHA financing. So let's look at what the actual payment looks like on this property. So our principal and interest payment is gonna come out to be $1,430.52. We are assuming our buyer has a 740 credit score. And again, this is FHA financing. So the interest rate that we're using is 6% to get our principal and interest number. Rates will vary depending on your credit score. So this is where you always wanna make sure you get qualified with a lender so you truly understand what your numbers look like. So again, our principal and interest number, now we're gonna factor in our property taxes. And I just went to the county assessor's website and that ended up being $49.47. 
And now we're also gonna factor in our homeowner's insurance. This I'm going to estimate at $75 a month. Remember, you can shop around for your homeowner's insurance. The best way to go about finding a policy is typically whoever your car insurance is with because as you have more lines of insurance and coverage, they tend to give you a discount. That's always an easy way to find good insurance for yourself. Now remember, with FHA financing, we do have mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is there for the life of the loan. Mortgage insurance on this specific property, we are looking at $166.10. Mortgage insurance does not vary on FHA loans like it does on conventional loans. It's the same factor. Every lender uses the same number and it's basically 0.85% of your loan amount. You don't need to get so caught up in those numbers. Your lender will calculate that for you as they do your pre-approval. Now, as I was looking at the website, they didn't disclose whether or not there was an HOA fee, but being that this is a townhome and most properties in Las Vegas have an HOA, I am gonna factor in a $65 a month HOA fee. Um, so just make sure as you are shopping and if especially for those of you that are relocating here to Vegas, you need to make sure that your real estate agent discloses that information to you. And if you are working with a lender that's not familiar with the Las Vegas market, you want to make sure when you get pre-approved, they do factor in some sort of HOA because if your debt to income ratio is at the higher end, which is what most lenders will do, they will what they call max qualify you for your payment any additional debt that's being taken on in that monthly obligation can easily make or break your deal. So you want to make sure they do that. Now we factor in all of our monthly expenses for this home. You're looking at a total monthly payment of $1,786.09 to live in this home. And remember, this is a three bedroom house. So if you are living in one of the rooms, obviously you'll take the master bed or maybe you'll rent that one out for more money, but you could easily rent out the other rooms Let's say room number one, we ask for 700 bucks. Room two, you could also ask $700. So now you've literally created $1,400 worth of cash flow for yourself every month. And now you're only responsible for the difference of 386 bucks. Now you've literally owned a home for $386 a month, you guys are splitting the utility bills and you've minimized your living expense. While every other renter in Vegas is being faced with higher rent payments every month. And remember, we don't have rent control out here. So if your landlord chooses to increase the rent by $500 or $1,000 a month, they can certainly do that. This is one strategy to help you get into a home, control your largest living expense, which is your housing payment, and you can start building wealth. This is an easy way to start hacking your way into becoming a real estate investor. Now, after a couple of years, once you live in this home, if you decide to move out, maybe you get married, maybe you get a promotion at work, you're making more money. Now you can go buy another primary residence and turn this one into a rental, or you can refinance this, pull some money out, turn this into an investment property. There's so many ways that you can leverage this one home once you are a homeowner. This is why so many people love getting their foot in the door to become an investor. Because once you own the home, you have many options. As a renter, you only have one option. You have to buy. And if you don't own the property, you're still stuck paying someone else's mortgage. So I hope this strategy helps you understand how easy it can be to go from renting to owning and also building up some cash flow to help offset the mortgage payment. This is just one of many ways that you can become a homeowner and an investor at the same time. Make sure to follow for more information and subscribe to my channel so you can learn how to grow your real estate portfolio. And I'll see you on the next video.